Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. In this quick video, I'm going to be reviewing these Giro Ranger mountain bike shoes. So I bought these probably six months ago, and the reason I got them is because I have these other Giros, which I also have a review video on, and I liked them so much, I thought, you know, let me get something a little bit higher performance without the laces, go with the Velcro, and I knew these, these new ones, these Rangers, were going to be lighter than these old ones. In fact, I don't remember the name of these older ones, but um, I can link the uh, video down below. And I've had these for like four years, five years now, and they're they're excellent. So I thought, you know what, let me upgrade, improve my performance a little bit, save some weight, and go with these. But to be honest, I haven't really used them a ton because I don't like them all that much. And let me explain why. So number one thing is it's true, they're lighter, so they are probably faster. And I do like the Velcro because it's just easy to get the fit, what I think is nice, rather than the laces. And it just kind of looks more, I don't know, pro. And I got the green just because it was on discount. Not that I, I love this green color, but it was a little bit cheaper. In terms of the price, I actually don't remember what the price is. I'll put a link to it, an affiliate link down below, and you can see what the price is. But I do remember they're not very cheap. They're not cheap shoes. I mean, of course, the, there's a huge range, and these aren't the most expensive, but... Yeah, like I said, they are Velcro, so you can do the three three Velcros and, and kind of size your, get your sizing pretty good. And by the way, these are size 42 Europe, I think eight and a half American, uh, which actually was true to fit for me, so that was totally fine. But here's the key problem that I had with them, is they just weren't that comfortable. The first thing that I noticed wasn't comfortable, this part is fine, but up here, no matter what I did with these, and I had to get them pretty loose, to make it even reasonably comfortable is right up here it really would press on my on the top of my foot going into my ankle just like right here like this point here and this point here and it wasn't that big of a deal for a short ride but after a while it actually it, it kind of got painful a little bit right here and here now i just find myself loosening this more and more and it just didn't seem right whereas these i never had that issue so maybe it's because this tongue has a lot more padding, it's much more softer, and the transition here is just, I think, a bit softer. Whereas over here, this tongue, as you can see, is almost nothing. You know, it's very, very, very thin. And so, I'm not really sure what it is, to be totally honest, but that kind of, I never have yet, at least up until now, and I'm not totally giving up, up on them. I'm gonna keep trying, but I've rode, probably 10 rides at least, and it's just not that comfortable. Um, then the second thing that I've had a little bit of, not trouble with, but I really don't like, is when you're walking around with these, I know they're not as bad as road shoes, which I've never worn, by the way. Uh, this, These are only my second pair of um, clipless cycling shoes I've ever had. Before this, I had a decathlon uh, pair that were very similar to this. So they were lace up and they're just very similar. And I liked those as well. They're very comfortable. And these, by the way, are extremely comfortable. They're almost just like wearing a regular shoe. So I, I love these. And in fact, I'll probably buy a new pair when these are totally worn out. Um, anyway, back to these though. Uh, the thing is, when you walk on them, it feels like the heel is low. It feels like your, your heel is low and your toe is up. Kind of like how the road cycling shoes uh, seem to fit with people. You kind of see them with that toe up weird walk and this isn't I'm sure as bad But it has that same feel it feels like the heel and your foot are on the ground And then your toe is up like a half of an inch just not it's not horrible But it's just a little uncomfortable to walk around on whereas these they feel just like any sneaker and you can see that they have a probably a little bit of a rise on the back like a standard sneaker does so that's the other thing I didn't love about them too much and I'm not sure I'm not sure what the future of these or, or these type of um, mountain bike, you know, racing type of shoes are going to be with me. Um, but one thing I would like to do is go ahead and get the weight so you can see how much they weigh and how much, you know, you can save by having these over, I guess, another pair of shoes. Just so you know, just so we all know what the weight is. There we go. So each one of these weigh 364 grams which isn't too bad. Now my older Giros, they weigh 394. For, so really you're only saving about 30 grams each, about 60 grams for the pair. And I don't have any kind of special insole in either of them. So 
I guess in reality, the weight isn't that much difference, but the other performance aspect is, is these are, and that's another thing, these are much stiffer, which I know is better for performance on the bike. Whereas these are, they're pretty stiff too, to be fair, but they're a little bit more flexible. It's hard for me to want to go back to these just because they just aren't as comfortable. When I did the Grinduro event a month ago, I was trying to decide should I go for these high performance ones, which might also be better if it rains and gets muddy. I was thinking, you know, there's less fabric here. It's a little, it should dry quicker. It's not going to be, you know, holding in the moisture like, like a, um, like this padded fabric will, but because of the comfort at the end of the day, I said, you know, I, this is a long ride. I need to be comfortable and I may need to uh, be pushing the bike and walking around a lot. So I ended up going with these and I really don't regret it. Now, maybe that's also because it didn't rain and I didn't get my feet that wet. But, um, yeah, this isn't a video about these, but I really like these. Uh, these, uh, I'm 50-50 on. You know, for the price, you may want to skip them. But I'll leave that up to you. I will say the fitment is correct for your size, at least in my experience, being a, a 42 or 8.5 American. If I got that wrong on the American side, by the way, I will... Um, make a correction. Let's see if it says, it may say actually in here. Oh, excuse me. It says size nine, size nine American, um, 42 Europe. That's true. I think that's right. I forget now, but anyway, it does say size nine. And I think I chose size nine because I read in the reviews that you should size up half a size on these. And I think that's correct. So normally I wear a size eight and a half, uh, on most of my shoes and these, I went with size nine and they fit perfectly. So um, there you go. You might want to size up half a size. Um, yeah, I think that's about all I have to say about these shoes. Uh, at the end of the day, they're, they're, they're kind of racy mountain bike shoes. So, yeah, you may want to, ex um, expect some discomfort and maybe, uh, try them, try them on quite a bit before you <laughs> expect to do any kind of event or anything like that. Unfortunately, I can't spe uh, speak to how long they're la going to last or how durable they are because I just haven't rode them that much. Usually for most of the rides, I'm like, these are gonna be fine, they are comfortable, I can walk around before and after the event in total comfort, so um, it's hard for me to wanna to put these on. If you're more of a racer though, and you do a lot of racing, obviously you'll be wanting to go with something more like this, I, I, I think. Anyway, thanks for watching, bye.